happy pre-Valentine's Day. Yes, I know. This is not a very dignified look for me. But, you know, I'm, I'm in the mood to be festive. So there we go. Unfortunately, I can't see. So I am going to remove these and replace them with the old uh, reliables. But hi, I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. And if you want to pre-download, uh, there's a little folder here of art that we may or may not be using, depending on your creative intentions this morning. Go to bit.ly, draw with me hearts, and download a PDF and print it out if you want to. But I'll be putting them up on the screen and we'll be able to see them. So if you want to draw with me, that's what we'll be drawing. Hearts. Yes. So that'll be fun. Um, today is... I don't know. It's 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 been a strange week for me. I think this week has felt like the beginning of the end, and the beginning of the end of what we've been living through for so long. It's the very beginning, though. I mean, it doesn't feel quite enough, and it feels like this beginning has somehow given some part of me license to, um, I don't know, get mad get depressed, get confused, get, I don't know, just thinking about how much time we've been spending in this situation. You and I have been drawing together for a long time, but particularly a, a lot, quite intensively since this began. And uh, that is nice, don't get me wrong, but I'm just sick of this whole damn thing. Just, so, I don't know, maybe being festive is um, will ameliorate it a bit, will shut down that nagging voice in my head that just wants to go to a restaurant. You know, I just want to go to a crowded bar. <sighs> but I won't until I should. So anyway, um, I, you know what I really would like to do? I'd just like to wander through an art supply store. I know that there's some, they're open, whatever. I just don't feel it. I want to feel free in an art supply store to look at pens <sighs> or brush pens, as it may be, because brush pens are the thing. Let me just quickly remind you, the Saturday we're having this drawing with a brush. I've told you this about this workshop before. This is the workshop that in one day is going to change how you draw. It's going to change how you draw. It's that simple. You're going to learn how to use a tool that you may own a brush pen. You may own one. You may own many of them. I promise you, you probably don't know how to use it because I know I didn't and I've been using them for years and I have a lot of friends who use them. And it was only when I sat down with Chris Kaler, I understood how to use them. And it's a really, really great tool that you can do so much with. And in a couple hours on Saturday, you'll figure it out. So go to bit.ly slash draw brush. You've got today to sign up. So I know you've been putting it off. But honestly, here's my point of view. We're here to draw with each other, right? And it's great fun to learn new things. That's what we do together. But invest a little bit of time to make a kind of quantum leap in your ability. And I'm telling you, next Thursday when we get together, you're just going to be bristling with brushes and uh, ready to draw anything with them. So anyway, I know a lot of you have signed up for it, and that's great. Um, but I know a lot of you have not. And honestly, you know, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Art is our lives. What are you going to spend money on? Food? Movie theaters? Theater tickets? No. Uh, hotels? No. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things you could be spending money on that you're not. So invest a little in some brush pens and, and this workshop and you'll have all right, I'm done talking about that now. Let's talk about hearts. I want to talk about hearts. Um, in fact, I want to actually go back because I've, I've been thinking about drawing hearts this week. And the organ, not the emoji. And um, hearts are kind of gross. If you look at them, if you look at this, it's like a big chunk of meat on a checkered background. 
Looks like it's in like butcher's paper getting ready to be wrapped up. Um, all right, Nana is asking an all important question. Okay, I should have mentioned this and I didn't. So I'm gonna get rid of this heart for a second to, to tell you about this. If you can't watch the drawing with a brush live on Saturday, will you be able to watch it later? Yes. Here's the deal. This course, you will have lifetime access to it, to the recording of it. And it will be in your library with all of your other recordings at the schedule tool. Last excuse, ching gone. Sign up for it. Can't do it this weekend. Want to do it in six months? Fine. Want to go back and review it a dozen times? You will do it. Good. So, yes. So it will be live. It will be live on Saturday, and that's when you can ask Chris questions. And on Sunday, you'll have the feedback session. But other than that, yes, you'll have access to it. So, all right. Let me get back my heart here. Let me get my heart back. Okay, so looking at the heart, as I said, kind of a gross thing. So that's not where we're going to go with it. We're going to try and, uh, I don't know, make some art out of it. We're not, we're not medical students, okay? But, this, but I am intrigued by this a little bit because it, it's sort of a complicated object, right? It's got all these pipes and stuff and chambers and things. Um, no, Chew, we're not going to eat it. But, I mean, chicken hearts, yes. I'm not even sure about that. But anyway, this heart, we are going to, I mean, so I'm looking at like different ways that people have worked with this as a subject. This is sort of interesting in a digital way, but it's still really, it looks too meaty. It looks too tubular. I don't know. It's still kind of gross. So I, that's not, that doesn't, doesn't inspire me. By the way, all of these things, all of these versions are uh, available to you to download. So uh, if you find, if you disagree with me and you want to do some different version uh, for inspiration, just look at this, go through this folder. Um, you know, this one is a bit more abstracted, but it's still kind of meaty, right? Looks like a big, big chunk of meat. So that's not really what we want. This, this reminds me of, did you, do you remember in, in high school biology, there was, I don't know, we had it at least, there was like a kind of a torso that stood on a table, like a life-size torso, and it had all these kind of plastic and rubber organs, and you could take them all out, and then you'd stack them back in, there's like a little intestines and stomach, and this and that. This is what that reminded me of, and, and it's kind of cute. It sort of looks like candy. So, yeah. Um, sorry, Celeste, I'm sorry to bring up heart disease. It's, a, it's an important thing. So um, maybe this is getting at it in some way. So sorry to remind you about that. Um, yes, what else? This, Loteria, the uh, sort of Spanish, you know, it's like a, I don't know why it's called Loteria. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it's sort of, I think it's kind of like tarot. Am I wrong? Don't know much about it, but it is a cool kind of graphic, I don't know, school. There's like a school of this kind of inexpensive printing that um, that you see these icons in, and this is this heart one. It's it's It looks like an extremely, um, I don't know, it's, it's a very big heart with very thin arteries, so not necessarily that healthy, but... Uh, <laughs> Sure about this one. Yes, my wife picked up this one. I'm not sure how interesting it is to draw. So let's move on. But if you want to draw this, and if you wanted to do something that was a tribute to Lotteria, you can. I like the colors of this one, and it's sort of more abstract. It looks more like a road map. So, um, what do you think? Robert, what does that mean? Charade number for each image versatile. Oh, it's kind of like bingo? I see, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so this one, at least to me, is uh, has a plan to it. Like, like, I could feel like I could draw this fairly easily. Um, so, yeah. And then... 
I kind of like this one as like an in-between to me. This is sort of in-between because it's, it's sort of anatomical, but it's sort of abstracted. And I kind of like the way it broke down the shapes. So I think I'm probably going to use this one, but you're free to do whatever you want with it. And I'm certainly not going to be like doing a reproduction of this. What for, right? I mean, this is, I'm going to be drawing in my sketchbook with a brush pen. And mm, this is clearly done uh, in some sort of digital application. So yeah. Um, right, I'm just looking at all of your comments. People are flowing in from all over. Alec from Istanbul. Hello. Um, Jean from California. So good. So let's think about hearts. I think hearts are, are um, you know, an interesting subject, but how do we make them feel like love? How do we make them feel like Valentine's Day? Like, what? how do we take this you know, pound or two of meat and to turn it into something that uh, uh, you can't find the link to download it. Well, it's right there, bit.ly, HTTT bit.ly slash DWM hearts. Okay, so let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Are you ready? What kinds of tools are you going to be using um, to make your heart? And you know, let's, I just want to think about this for a minute. Like, do I want to um, do something with color? Maybe, maybe, or maybe I want to do something. I'm drawing on, still drawing on this very rough paper. So um, this paper is, let me put my special glasses away. Um, and let's have a look here. So yeah, I've got my, this is this rough paper I've been working on recently. I'm, I'm almost two-thirds of the way through the sketchbook. Um, but in the meantime, I'm continuing to use it, and I'm continuing to use this brush pen, various brush pens. Um, I also have this, this, and this black. I, I think this is, um, has, is water-based. Gray, red, and water brush pen with water. So these might come into play, but I might also decide to bring in some gouache or some, I don't know, some other stuff, maybe some, uh, some colored pencils, some markers. I don't know. Posca pens. I like that idea, Karen. I don't really have Posca pens, but if I could go to an art supply store, I might get some because I have been, I have been intrigued by them. And now that I'm working kind of big and rough and colorful. So, all right. So are we ready? Is, is this piece of art reference big enough? I think it is. It's big enough. So. Pen's a little dry. Actually, I kind of like that dry look. I'm going to keep it that way. It's sort of like a mango. At least this version of it is. Mango-like. And then I'm not sure what this thing is. Do we have any, is there a doctor in the house? Can anybody tell me what this thing is? Here, is it like a lump of art, arterial fat or something? Something kind of, looks like an acorn, this whole thing, which is sort of interesting. But, um, you know, I've been thinking about my heart on, on m multiple levels. I didn't leave it in San Francisco. That's for damn sure. I might have left it in New York. But no, my heart is here. My heart is here. Love and spring are in the air. But what other cliches are there about hearts that we can investigate? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Is that true? I think so. I have been thinking about the kinds of conversations that it's been possible to have over the last year with people who we haven't seen in a really long time. 
And I don't know about you, but it feels to me like like I'm talking to people who I haven't seen for a long time less and less. It's as if in some ways the connections are dimming and wearing out. Which is sad. I mean, maybe that's part of what's been making me kind of blue this past week is just thinking about that. Maybe I shouldn't be thinking about it, but it's okay to think about things that make you feel sad sometimes. It's called not being in denial. But all right, none of these kind of vain things. Well, they're not vain things, they're veins. Or maybe they're arteries. I can't remember what the difference is. I don't pay much attention in biology. You know, my high school biology teacher, a man named Vincent Copeland. If you're out there, Vincent, you're a nice man, but I don't know how good of a teacher you really were. He was kind of a bit of a buffoon. I, I remember there was one week where they decided that we should dissect fetal pigs. I don't know. I think it was a kind of a weird choice. I think it's the kind of thing that doesn't happen anymore in schools. But we had to dissect fetal pigs and... Um, it was awful. I just remember, and I remember we made a little film, and it was of Mr. Copeland running a fetal pig along the counter of the biology of the biology lab room, and making squealing noises. So using it kind of like a little puppet, it was a small dead animal. It was really, in retrospect, kind of a disturbing thing for a teacher to be doing. But yes, so uh, yeah, and then they were like, I don't know, you, they were, they, a lot of people were disturbed by it. I kind of was too. It's like, well, not just by that, of course, but just by the idea of why do we need to do that? I remember when I went to college and I took Psych 101, and one of the things we had to do was to train a pigeon in a sort of Pavlovian response, like, you know, you had to train it to... to respond to a bell or something and eat corn. And then somebody revealed that all these pigeons that we had been training would have to be euthanized at the end of the term because they were now no longer uh, naive, was the term they used. They were no longer naive, and so they couldn't be used in other experiments. I thought, man, I just took this course to fulfill my science credit, and now I'm responsible for this poor beast being euthanized? I don't know. Anyway, that was before PETA existed, I guess. It just felt like a sad thing to be involved with. <laughs> Sorry. I am not in a, as you can tell, I'm in a dark mood today. Meredith says, we still dissect fetal pigs but we also teach respect for the animal. Yeah, that I guess. I mean, I guess it's respectful, but you're still cutting them up. So Sarah said she had to attend an actual autopsy. A young girl. Oh, my God. All right, that's really upsetting. Yeah, it, that, not in high school, presumably. Phyllis explains that veins are smaller than arteries and branch off them. Okay, so... These are presumably art. Oh, that's probably why they're colored. Some are blue and some are red. So, is this the Valentine's Day show you were expecting? Maybe not. We're always full of surprises here. I draw with me. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of tone, just to give it a bit of dimension, and uh, that's what's nice about this this brush pen when it's kind of dry like this, is it really gives this kind of feathery look that I think is pretty cool and uh, can really make things look three-dimensional. Well, that's an exaggeration. You can really give things tone. And tone is, uh, you know, tone is nice. Right, 
that's kind of abstracted. I forgot to actually even acknowledge those uh, guys that I showed at the beginning that we drew last week, a group of guys. There's some beautiful interpretations there. It was just hilarious to see. I'm, I wonder how those guys would feel about it. We actually found out, I think, that they were like a basically like an acapella singing group, like a barbershop quartet. I'm not sure if that makes them any more cool. Probably not. Um, It's just nice to see all those different ways in which people celebrated their look, if nothing else. We didn't don't know much about their sound, but there's some sort of faint veins under the surface here. I'm gonna put those in a bit too. You can see that. Is my pen running out of ink or is the roughness of the paper giving it that look? That's a good question. It, my pen is not actually running out of ink. Um, in fact, I could, uh, I'm, it's, it's a full, relatively full cartridge in there. So yeah, it's not, it's not the, the pen. Um, this nice paper, this paper is very rough. And so if you kind of just go slightly, you know, just don't press too hard, you, that's how you get that effect with a rough paper. Um, if I wanted to, I could, here, let me show you an example. So here, I take this, and here you see, on this paper, it's nice and black. But here, I, I could make it darker, but I'm kind of, I'm just sort of brushing lightly because I don't want to fully commit any of these lines yet. I might decide later on that I want to, um, you know, just put some stuff over them if they're too heavy black, it's going to be problematic. So that's really the answer to that. Yeah, it's true. Sarah says it has a vintage medical school book look to it. Yeah, I think that's the nature of this. I mean, so we could just say, uh, let, me, let me see, I'm going to take this gray. I may, re may regret come to regret this, but... Um, you take the gray, try it out. The gray is kind of dry too, but it is gray, so it's slightly lighter. And uh, I might do that later. Just adding just a little bit more tone, but of a slightly different color. It's nice to draw on tone paper. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but tone paper is. Uh, you know, it's, it's automatically has a color, but it also, it has a sort of emotion to it as well. The, the, the quality that this tan look brings into it. Or buff, my wife calls it buff. Buff was the name of um, our high school basketball coach, Nick Buffalo Mag Nick Buff 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 Buffalo Maglio. He was uh, he was like a extremely almost morbidly obese gym teacher. And uh, my best friend Julian was the um, captain of the basketball team. I, as you can well imagine, had absolutely nothing to do with the basketball team except for occasionally mocking my friend for taking it seriously. But uh, yeah, I was that kid. Um, so yeah, and then Nick Buff Magler used to yell at me a lot because I would uh, try to convince my friend to skip practice and generally behave in unsportsmanlike ways. But anyway, Buff is apparently another word for tan. Apparently our dog is Buff. Pug is buff colored. So we've been noticing some black hairs underneath her fur, some slightly black, black quality. So I'm, I'm thinking of just taking her back to the breeder because clearly there's something going on. And 
and uh, see if I can get my money back. So yeah, so I'll be driving her back there. I, I haven't told my wife that yet, but um, we'll be taking her back to Compton, or at least I will be. She, my wife probably won't want to come because she she quite likes the dog, and uh, yeah. But we're not having a we're not having a dog that is not perfect in the house. So I still have the receipt, and uh, I'm gonna try and get my money back. I'm joking. I wouldn't do that to my dog. I can hear her growling out there. Now barking. Yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. She's smart. Although defective. My wife says that I will go before Twiglet goes. <laughs> We're not getting rid of the dog. She's my favorite. Might get rid of JJ, but not the dog. All right, that's kind of nice. You know what? Also, I was I've been using is brown ink. If you'll hold on a second, I'm gonna see if I can dig that up because I had a bottle of brown ink, and that was kind of nice. Yeah, sorry, Cynthia. I was just joking. Surely you know me by now. sepia ink. This could be the one. It's acrylic. That's possible. Well, there's this one. Calligraphy ink. Ooh, and I have this one, which is quite exotic. Fumo di Londra. This ink is, from what I remember, it is a gray color. So yeah, but so I think I, I think, I think I'm gonna try out one of these browns. Does walnut count as brown? Um, I think so. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this, but um, I think I'm going to maybe do a little bit of a wash with it. So. There is, I'm going to try it with this acrylic ink. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know exactly what I'm doing right now. So we are venturing into uncharted territory. I'm kind of the Christian, Dr. Christian Barnard of sketchbooking right now. Br blazing new trails. And uh, I'm transplanting new kind of ink into my sketchbook. I'm, just, I'm transplanting it from this bottle. I'm going to make it really diluted as you can see down here. Really diluted. Let's see what that's like. Oh yes, that's good. That was a good idea. Can you see? Because I think it'll also get lighter once it dries. But it, yeah, that has a nice quality. Kathleen says, hi from Florida, which is Florida's least favorite state. That's kind of hilarious, even though I don't quite know what it means. Does that mean that Florida fights with itself all the time? We think that's, I, I, I'm quite happy with that decision that kind of just came to me to, to use some brown ink. You know, I'm not saying that you should go out and start using brown ink. Um, I think it just happens to work nicely with this paper. And I've never, the brown heart of darkness. Yes, I think you've summed up, you've summed up this entire installment of Draw With Me in one good pun. I'm not gonna, I don't remain dark for long. I'm not like Broadway. My lights will come back on. 
But do you feel that way? Do you do you do you have this? Are you having a similar feeling that you're fed up? Fed up with all this, or, or has this happened to you before? Probably has. I mean, I'm sure I've gone through this before. It just kind of struck me now, and I think it's it's almost like because there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel that that I'm feeling the I'm feeling like it's okay to whine in a way that I didn't before, because. My heart is brown. My heart's getting old and brown. I want to fill it with fresh blood. I want to get out there. Buy some Posca pens. Buy popcorn. Yes, I've de- have I <laughs> I've depressed Catherine. Sorry. Oh, I haven't. She disagrees with me. Yes. Yeah, I think it's just, it's just like, you know, I'm glad that there I mean, I'm glad that some people are getting vaccinations. I mean, maybe some of you have had them. I have no idea when I'm ever getting mine, you know, but I'm a young I'm a young guy. So it's okay. Let you geezers go ahead of me in line. when they start inoculating the 20-year-olds, then I'll wait my turn. But in the meantime, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's like it's like when you go to, you know, if you go to like a nightclub, I don't know how often you do that, but or if you go somewhere like that and you're waiting in line outside and other people are just kind of skipping the line and going in, you know, and you, like, good, I'm glad, I hope you have a good time, but uh, it's kind of irritating. The situation is irritating. Some people are having fun. Or are they? Is it really fun to have had your vaccine for those of you who've had it? Has it really, are you suddenly like, great, now it's over, I can do whatever I want? Probably not. Because the rest of us, you know, you can't go and be in a crowd when everybody else is still waiting their turn. Urban sketching. I was talking to my friend Tom Kane last week and he said why don't you go out in your car and do some urban sketching and draw you know and learn about phoenix and go and do some drawing around town i was like yeah that's a that is a good idea i haven't done it but yeah i could go and do that you know if i don't feel entirely comfortable doing normal urban sketching where you go and sit on the sidewalk and all that stuff i could just go and sit in the car i mean cars are Cars are kind of good places to draw. You know, you've got a radio, you've got air conditioning, you've got like or heating, you've got places to put your stuff. Cup holders, nice big window to look through. I should do that. Have you have you considered doing that? Have you done it? There it is, my leathery brown heart. Time for some coffee. You should put some coffee on the thing. All right, I'm glad to see that some of you have had shots, Marilyn. I see that Jen Cahill is is um, is tempting my wife with C's candy, or has she already been talking about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. It's time to get some C's candy. All right, there it is, my brown heart. I'm gonna write some stuff around it later on. Think about what I want to say. Maybe I'll write about. Valentine's Day? Maybe I'll just write about my brown heart of darkness. That's now my new term. Heart of darkness. That's, in fact, I just remembered when there was a period where, hey, speaking of brown, speaking of buff, here she is. Let's have a look at her. Let's take a break from this and have a look. 
performing. Okay, I'm not going to take you back. I'm not going to take you back. Yes, here's Twiglet sneezing. So Twiglet, um, what was I just talking about? I, can, I have no idea. Um, yes, I was just saying how I had a job and my boss used to call me Heart of Darkness. Do you remember that? Yeah. Heart of Darkness. Um, so here we have it. Hashtag SBS draw with me. I want to see your hearts. Show me your heart. Rip out your heart and post it on social media, on Instagram or Facebook, and we will collect it up. And it will be the beginning of next week's program. It will be a cavalcade of hearts, marching hearts. Hey, listen to this dog. You hear her? Yeah, that's, that's the noise that she makes. This is a very noisy animal. But she makes very strange noises. She's barking now, but she also does all this snuffling and strange things. All right. I, I actually enjoy that. I feel, I feel lighter and better. How about you? Do you feel better? Yeah, it's nap time. Um, I feel better for uh, having drawn with you today. I hope you feel better for having drawn with me. It was nice. It was, um, it was liberating somehow. And, I, and I'm quite happy with the way this page turned out. Here, let me put you down. Sit here on my lap. Let's have a look. Yeah. I actually experimented with brown paint because I did um, the cover for Spark Magazine. It was was in uh, brown, too. Brown. That's snow. Snow on the cacti. That was me yesterday. Oops, can you see it? Yeah. But I'm happy with his heart. A happy heart. Thank you for letting me spend this time with you today. If you are a Spark member, I will see you in the after party. Today's after party is going to be good. We're going to be getting ready for Chris Kaler's workshop. I've got a little bit of prepping to do. And so I think we're all going to do that together. So if you're up for that, let's do it. Or we could keep working on our hearts. I want to maybe do the background a bit. I want to do some lettering. So yeah, so this, I want to bob my head. Dun, 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 dun. That's good. Um, it's kind of like, yeah. So, so th anyway, <laughs> I'm smiling. I'm feeling happy. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for being with me today. I'll see you next Thursday. When we do something, by then it'll be it'll be amazing. Next Thursday is going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful. I shouldn't really complain. It is almost spring here. Our pear tree is full of blossoms and hundreds of bees. I, I'm 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 an asshole for complaining. Honestly, there's nothing to complain about. So, thank you for joining joining me today. Thanks for drawing with me, and I will see you all next week, next time.